stand, let's turn to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. The 20th verse. It says, my son. We all know that means daughter too. God's not a respecter of persons. And when he uses mankind in the back. Man in the Bible, he's referring to mankind. He said, But my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. And keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life. Life. Mm. Say life. To those who find them. And health to all their flesh or medicine. It'll say if you probably if you go to King James Center line, that's what it'll, the Hebrew translation is, is medicine. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, we come before you humbly this day. Yeah. Yeah. We're expecting a manifestation. Of you this day, sir. Your great and awesome healing power. A manifestation of each one who hears and each one who receives this word in their hearts today. Lord, prepare. Lord, let their hearts be prepared as your word goes forth today to receive the seed that's being sown. That all you. All the elements necessary will water it with your word, and Lord, you will provide the increase. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Everybody, you can be seated right now. And like I said, that's God's prescription for healing right there. And we wonder at times why we're not getting healed. Well, we don't follow what he says. I told you earlier, he taught, he preached, and then he healed. But there's a part that's up to us too. He made it personal right there. He spoke to you. He says, you, you attend to my words. You give it. Your full attention. And incline your ears yes. to my sayings. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Yes. And that's where the healing, I just said, that's where the healing begins. Is in here. What's going on in here is what's going to be a manifestation on the outside. Robert Morris was talking the other night about, and this, these are some of the scriptures that have just absolutely changed my life, and it's 1 Joshua 1 8. And he gave Joshua these instructions. He said, Meditate on this book of law day and night. Do not let it depart from your mouth. <clears throat> then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. You are the understood subject. And all of these things, we, we have a part to play, people. You know, and we want to get things out of order. We want to come in and get healed but that's not the way it works. When Jesus went into a town, he taught, he preached, and he healed. That's the way it works. Preaching doesn't te precede the, te the teaching, and healing doesn't precede the teaching or the preaching. 
But we just want to come in and say, Lord, my name's Jimmy. I'll have all you give me. Just pour that blessing out. Open up the windows of heaven. And... Amen? Well, that's the truth. And if we recognize that truth, that God's kingdom is not a kingdom of chaos. There's principles. And we are kingdom citizens. We have dual citizenship. We're nations. We're citizens of the United States of America. And we're citizens of God's kingdom. And that's the one we owe our priority to. No matter what's going on here, we live that. He is the head of our kingdom. He leads us. He directs us into all truths. And what he says will come to pass. And we need to get that in us. But how do we open the door for God's super to come on our natural? Signs and wonders. So that whenever the need arises, we can be supernaturally healed. We follow this prescription. But when we're sick, we don't start praying first. We go to the Word of God first. We see what God has to say about this. Then, we pray. And when we pray in this manner, then we know that he is heard. And he, he tells us in Isaiah, I believe it's 43, 26, he said, come let us reason together that you may be proved right. Well, if you say what he says, say, you got it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. It's, it's it. It's pretty easy to grasp. Mm -hmm. it's, he laid it all right there. Mm -hmm. It's a simple plan. But we get in, to get in religion mixed into it mm -hmm. and things. And a lot of people get robbed. Mm -hmm. I know a, a good brother baptized with the Holy Ghost and everything. My back was hurting me after surgery and everything, you know, and he just... And I hadn't been taught about divine healing, and he laid his hands on me, and... Nothing happened. Well, the soil hadn't been prepared to receive. And that's what we... By teaching, we prepare the heart. To receive his provision. And, and, it's, and it's divine healing is really pretty easy to grasp. Men and ladies, if you happen to cut yourself as your shaver, you get that cut. You think in a couple days it'll be healed. Right? So you do believe in healing. You break a leg and the doctor tells you in four to six weeks it's going to be healed. And you believe him. Yeah, you'll say, Brother Dave, that's just the natural taking place. Well, but God is the creator of all this. He is the healer. Whether you're a believer or not, it is still 
him that is the healer. You know, I mean, skeptics will scoff at this and stuff, but they actually do believe in it. But when we get the anointed one in it, Christ in it, then what took four to six weeks can happen in four to six seconds. Amen? You hear me? When we get Him, when we give it to Him, when we say what He says, and that anointed one is living in us. This is by God's master plan. Psalms 139, 14 says, I, I give thanks, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah, fearfully and wonderfully made. And he made this body. And when he's in it, this is his temple. He can eat it. The manifestations and the glory of God were in you. Now, well, I know I told you all about my get off off my water truck year or so ago and I, I'm up on it and some of you know my water truck, the front bumper's about that high and I hook a toe in it and I come off of there and I snap my leg. I hear it cracking and crunching. I know my leg is broke and I get on the ground. Pow! And on the way down I said, oh Jesus. When I hit that ground, my leg was healed. The super came into the natural. I knew it. I know what bones sound like when they break. And then the lady from across the street come running over there. She said, "You okay? Should I go get Tim?" And I said, "Well, yeah, maybe." I could kind of take an inventory of myself. There's my cell phone, my blender, my glasses, and. I looked, my knee was out of joint. Well, the following week, I'm going to prepare to preach a message, physician, heal yourself. It says, well, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I just reached down there like that, put my hand on the knee and pop it back in. I said, forget about it. The Lord handled it. And I did what he said. He said, lay hands on the sick. Yeah. Yeah. Now recover. Yeah. Attend to my word. Attend to my word. Yeah. 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 Pastor, and I'm, I'm thinking about this the other day. And I... I got a word from Brother John G. Lake that I received. And I'm thinking about it because I know... And I'm, I'm going to give you the best flu shot ever right now. I'm telling you. You don't have to have the flu. You don't have to have the cold. You don't have to have no viruses. I'm telling you. John G. Lake was a missionary evangelist in Africa in the early 1800s. And he's over there and he's in the town. And all these people are dying of the bubonic plague. He's caring for who he can. And he was a divine healer. The Lord worked through him, burying the dead. Well, a British core ship arrives, and they come ashore. And they said, what have you been using to protect yourself? He said, and it's Romans 8 too. The spirit of the law of life of Christ Jesus in me has 
made me free from the law of sin and death. Sickness is sin in your flesh. It's not that you sin, but because of the fallen world we're in. You know, I'm not pointing the finger. I'm a little more humble now. I'm not pointing my finger at somebody. There's only two pointing back at <laughs> But they said, this can't be. He says, I'm going to show you. He says, you have a microscope there. He says, take from the spittle, from the victim's mouth, and lay it in my hand, and lay it on the microscope and look at it. And they could see all the germs moving about in this spittle. He says, now, place the phone in my hand, and place my hand under the microscope. They look, and the germs are dying. The spirit of the law of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. What did he just tell us in Proverbs? My word is life. Life. To those that find it. In medicine. To all their flesh. Glory to God. Glory to God. But I did, I noticed Jesus He says, do not let them depart from me. He says, incline your ear to my sayings. Lean into it. We know that faith comes in hearing by the word of God. Yeah. If he, you want, I'm going to look over here. I know this is moving a little slow and stuff, but this is just the way the Lord is moving me right now. I can't. Uh, but in the, in the parable of the, of the sower, we're all familiar with this. The sower comes and sows the word. And the birds of the air immediately come and take it up. This is our first one. But Jesus goes down through that litany. And he said to them, He who has an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. And I got into this the other day and it just excited me. Then he talks about and he's talking about that when the word is sown here in the 15th verse and these that are those beside the path where the word is sown but when they hear Satan immediately comes and takes the word which is sown in their hearts. And then down in the 19th verse, or the 18th verse, and others are sown among thorns and the one who hears the word. But the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire of other things therein choke out the world. Still, others are sown on good soil, those who hear the word and receive it and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But then he talks about a light under a basket. Is a candle brought to be put under a basket or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hidden except to be revealed, neither is anything kept secret except to be proclaimed. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Then he says, in the 24th verse, he said to them, Take heed what you hear. The measure you give will be measured for you and to you who hear will more be given. For to him 
and from him who is not will be taken even what he has. He who doesn't hear. We know that faith comes by healing, and healing by the word of God. It takes faith and the power of God to heal. But if you're not, Satan comes and steals it immediately from you. Because you haven't heard. And Isaiah talks about that. We have eyes, but we don't perceive. We have ears, but we don't hear. Now I was talking about Joshua 8 a moment ago. And it says, you will be prosperous and have good success. Dr. Morris the other night said, prosperous is removing the burden. And I said something to the pastor the other day, so I get to looking in my Bible dictionaries and my strong concordance, prosperous. And I can't find removing the burden. But I did. After I heard what the Spirit saying. Prosperous in the Hebrew is the same as a shalom of God. Pastor and I always say to one another when we depart from one another, shalom, shalom. Peace within, peace without. The shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, your salvation language, your deliverance, your prosperity, everything you need is in the shalom. The peace. Part of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. My goodness. Psalms 138.2 says the Lord magnifies His Word above His name. And I'm trying, I'm trying to think of the correct scripture because I think it's Philippians 4. I guess I could just turn in there, couldn't I? I'll get there in a moment. Have a shot of popcorn while you're waiting on me. Chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. God highly exalted him. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word. Are, uh, yeah. Wow, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He magnifies his word above his name. This is my beloved son, who and whom I am well pleased. We're his sons and daughters. Yeah. Cancer is a name. Yeah. Sugar diabetes is a name. Yeah. Arthritis is a name. Yeah. Lupus. Yeah. High blood pressure. Every name that is named shall bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And he gave us that name to use. We're wanting 
to see the signs and wonders. We're wanting to see a manifestation of the super and the natural, but we're not using what we've been given. And we just didn't... I've stumbled onto some of these things accidentally. Like my flu shot. And that's why I went to thinking about this when last week Aunt Lee got up. She usually gives me a hug. She said, I've got, I said, if it touches me, it's going to die. I'm not worried about it. I'm not. When I got that, when that seed was sown into my heart, God provided that increase and there was a harvest of it in my life. And I tried to tell the brethren about that. And you all can do it too. If you take that word and make it your own, it's personal, it's for the body, but it's for you too. Make it your own. I have not had a cough, cold, sore throat, sneezing, sniffling in nine years. And I just kind of stumbled on that accidentally. But that is a supernatural power of God, the working of the Word of God. I'll tell you, you what? You plant that seed into a good soil in the natural. <laughs> the, the soil will do what it's supposed to do. Have any of you ever dug a fence post? You set that post in the ground. It's good ground. You put that ground in around it. That ground starts doing exactly what God designed it to do. That ground goes to work on the bottom of that fence post. That ground is trying to break off that crust. That, it, it, that ground thinks it's, it's trying to grow a tree right there. Are you hearing me? That's what the Word of God does, and that's when it's in good soil. So we need to prepare our hearts to receive. And then water it with the Word. Water it with the Word. John 6, 63. He said, These words I speak to you. They are spirit and they're life. This is our life source, our spirit, not this pump right here. But he's concerned about it. He is concerned about everything. He wants us. Okay. Romans 8.11 says, If the Spirit of God dwells in you. He who raised Jesus from the dead will quicken or bring to life your mortal body. So he's concerned about us in this life. Not in the sweet by and by right now. We're his messengers. If we're going through his gospel's not going forward. If we're sick, if we're under the weather, if we're doing any things. And He has availed Himself to us through His Word. That's what He says in Psalms 107 20. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Jesus, He sent Jesus to us. What was Jesus' purpose? To destroy the works of the devil. Amen? Amen? My goodness. Glory to God. Glory to God. I spoke early 
earlier of laying on the hands, and there's a there's a spiritual principle here. And it's by the law of contact and transmission. The laying on of hands. When we lay hands on one another with purpose. And the soil's been prepared. And the faith rises up at that point of contact, his supernatural power is released. I told you one that God wants to manifest himself today. He impressed upon me how to do it. But Jesus went, he taught, and he preached, and he healed. Have you heard any good news today? Now I don't I don't think that there's anybody here that believes that God is not able to heal. But you doubt that he's willing. You hear any? We don't think he's wealthy. Now there's where a consummation comes together. Remember the leper that Jesus made clean? He had come down off the mountain. He just preached a sermon on the mount. And the leper came up to Jesus. He said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. That leper believed that Jesus could heal him. This is what's happening in the body a lot right now. Everybody's believing that God is able, but they don't think he's willing. But here's where the consummation of faith took place. When this man heard, Jesus said, I will. There was a consummation happened right then. You believe that. Each one of you here believe that. Just say it right now. I believe it's God's will for me to be well. Say it. I believe it's God's will for me to be well. I believe I received my healing. I believe I received my healing. But our hearing, our hearing sometimes gets us in the problem. But he tells us about it. He gave us a spirit. He said, I won't leave you of orphans. I'm going to give you a helper. And so I hope I'm being some help to you too. The Holy Spirit, you're not helping me. Because I didn't quite know what I was going to do. And I look in right here. I know it's in Hebrews. After Ron Bruce, after Mike Holman. Hebrews chapter 10. Yeah. Verse 1. Therefore, we should be more attentive to what we have heard, lest we drift away. What are you hearing? Are you hearing the doctor's report? Are you hearing what CNN and MSNBC and Fox News has to say over the nation? Our nation needs to heal too. All of creation is growing. We're waiting on the coming of the Lord. 
But we've been given the power to do something about it. We've been given the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And what does he put on that? He says, and no thing, what's no thing? Nothing. No thing shall harm you. But it's by attending to his word and inclining our ears to his sayings. Keeping them in the midst of our heart. And I like that about Joshua where he says, do not let this word depart from your mouth. The doctor's operating on the facts. This could be truth. True. But you, ye, a 32, shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them with your word, Lord. Your word is Truth. Not truth. It's truth. Truth supersedes truth. It may be that cancer's on that book. But 1 Peter 2.24 says, By stripes you're healed. In Isaiah, he says, He bore our griefs and our sorrows and our iniquities. What he bore we need not bear. He bore Matthew 8, 17. He says he bore our sicknesses and our diseases and carried them away and left them right back there in the hub of hell where they came from. Why are we picking them up? Because we're not saying what he says about it. If you want this thing to be removed, believe it from the life source right here. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What have you been putting in here? In abundance. Have you been giving your full attention to what the Word of God says for your finances, for your relations, for your healings? That's what He says. Give my Word full and full attention. And he said that you are not hearing. You don't hear it to receive it with joy. Yeah, that sounds like me. But then you hear that. And it just destroys what you heard. You know, Satan, Satan had all these messengers around. His little cohorts and everything whispering this. Doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's what it gets us. That's his he's willing. He is willing to heal, heal us. Well, yes, sir. I told you the Lord impressed upon me to do something. And I told you that all y'all should have your Bible open to 1 Peter 2.24. If you don't have a Bible, there's probably one there in front of you. I'm just saying what the Lord impressed upon me. Now the Word of God is living and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing asunder the soul and spirit. Bone and marrow. You got some arthritis bothering you? That will limber you all right up. Right there. Between the bone and the marrow. Right there. 
Amen? But the Word is alive. It's alive. This is the living Word. The woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch but the end of this moment, yeah. I'll be made well. Jesus said, you're made whole. He went, he gives always give us a little more than we ask for. Oh, complete, the shalom, nothing missing. She doesn't spend all the money she had on doctors and things. He restored, he's our restorer, redeemer. He gave us everything back. Everything the devil took. Believe that. Believe that's his will for you. Hide that in your heart. Hide that in your heart. Keep that seed in there. Then keep, what does he tell? And water, water, water. Water that seed with the Word of God. Water it with the Word of God. But when he, Jesus teached and preached, they lay the people out in the streets and they just cry to touch the hem of his garment. I want all of you to reach out today. Jesus is here with us right now. He is the Word. He is the Word. It's living. It's powerful. And it's going to take care of anything you got right now. There is going to be a consummation of your faith in His power right now. If you'll reach your hand out and declare this with me. By His stripes I am healed. By His stripes I am healed. Lord, it is Your will that I be well. It is Your will that I be well, Lord. You did all of this on the cross of Calvary for me that I it will be made well. The blood from those stripes, the blood from those stripes on your back, the power of that blood that heals me. And what you bore, Lord, I need not bear. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, now receive that. Receive that in your heart. That seed is sprouting right now in your heart. Water it with your praise. Water it with your praise. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Praise His great and awesome name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we give you all praise. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. Forever and ever. Amen. Did anybody, did you get your healing today? Did you get your healing today? Did you get your healing in that relationship? Did you get that healing in your body? Did you get that feeling in your finances? Say it. Say it. I got it. I got it. It's mine. It belongs to me. All that you did for me, Lord Jesus. You did it all for me. And I give myself to you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You've been a wonderful audience.